start off with, um, my name is Sarah Barnett. I'm a project manager at Trinity Financial. Um, I've been with Trinity for about 10 years. I can't believe it's been that long. And we do a whole series of uh, development, mostly residential um, with mixed use <coughs> component and a lot of urban stuff. So um, if you know Maverick Gardens in East Boston, uh, those public housing project that we completely renovated um, into mixed uh, income housing. That was my first project with Trinity. Um, and then we moved on to other uh, ground lease items with complex things like building over uh, North Station. Uh, we were the designated developer and we built Avenir, which is the project on Canal Street, right in front of the TV Garden. Now you guys uh, may remember all of these sites at both in Triangle as being completely uh, empty. And we were lucky enough and uh, worked hard enough to make sure that this building on Canal Street was built before the last term of the economic cycle. We had originally planned condominiums. We sort of foresaw that that wasn't going to go places. We did convert it to rental and were able to build 241 uh, really beautiful uh, apartments with a CBS on the ground floor. The uh, apartments have since leased up, and I think it's really added to the vibrancy of the Bullpen Triangle, where there were really weren't many residences and had been sort of a ghost town. I think that the businesses are particularly uh, appreciative, especially given the fact that there's not a lot of traffic over there in these days for the Celtics games. Um, so Avenir was an immensely difficult, complex uh, construction. It was over the green and orange line. We had all of the commuters coming in and out of there each day. But I think we did a very good job, and I hope that uh, you would agree, in making sure we were minimizing disturbances to the neighborhood. And that building went up probably faster than you could ever imagine, and now it's a big, beautiful building there that looks a little bit bigger than we had anticipated because I think all of the other buildings need to come around it to fill out the, fill out the neighborhood. But if you're walking down Canal Street, I think you do get a sense of it adding vibrancy to the neighborhood. So there's a long tortured history of this parcel, which I'm sure many of you have been involved with because it's been going on about 10 or 15 years. But um, the previous developers were um, de-designated a year and a half ago, and we were the second, uh, second in line for that parcel when the original RFP came out in 2005. The MBTA and MDOT came to us and said, are you guys interested in developing it? And we said, well, given the success of Avenir, um, we definitely are. So we spent a good chunk of last summer and the fall uh, developing a plan, which we were very excited about. And I think I came here last September or October, um, and we began the discussion of what retail space makes sense here. Um, at that time, I had uh, two potential retailers, and I'm, I'm leaving things nameless these days because it just gets everybody in trouble. Um, but I had two potential retailers, and uh, we discussed how competition was a good thing, <coughs> making sure that um, we could try to land the most appropriate tenant here was something that we really wanted to work on. Um, sometime around the middle of the winter, one of those retailers dropped out. We focused our energy on another um, supermarket operator that had the most support from the community, um, and we worked diligently with that um, operator through the winter and into the spring. Um, and I'm talking diligently. <coughs> Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of architecture work looking at a, a second floor supermarket on this site, which I think has been always the hopes and dreams of the neighborhood. We, um, we fully anticipated that coming to fruition. In fact, I was ready to submit my notice of project change in May and was all geared up to do that before I delivered uh, my baby in July. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the operator pulled out. It was uh, disappointing to all of us and uh, most significantly to the neighborhood who it's, it would have served. Um, then over the course of the summer, uh, we sort of thought, what are we gonna do? You know, we had already gone out to all of the myriad of potential supermarket operators through uh, and showed them a second floor scheme. Um, and then actually in the summer of this year, uh, the supermarket committee, uh, along with the BRA, um, had some pretty good thoughts. They actually suggested what about a ground floor supermarket that might be smaller but still serve the needs of, um, of the residents? Uh, you know, we had looked at a whole bunch of schemes, and by that time we were just tired. But we took up the initiative again over the summer and revised our plan so that our ground floor retail 
it was grown, it grew to about 22,000 square feet. I'm going to show you um, some of those plans now. Um, the 22,000 square feet, and you all know where we are, I mean, you're all here at the supermarket, so I assume you know what parcel we're speaking of. Um, that ground floor retail, we expanded, I, and you may remember past incarnations where this is North Washington Street, which I'm glad to hear you all support commercial space on North Washington Street. <laughs> this is, it was a great lead in today. Um, this is ground floor retail. Before there was, um, we had anticipated having loading through this part of the space, which would then break up these two retail spaces. What we were able to do was instead create all of the rear loading in this back corridor. We still are set up to have full service um, internal loading, which I think is incredibly important for the neighborhood and the people who live here and the retailers. If you don't, I mean, I, I agree. I hate seeing big trucks pull up in front and unload all their wares and hold up traffic and do that sort of thing and especially in North Washington Street, that just wouldn't fly. But we were able to reconfigure the internal loading, which allowed us to have a full swath of retail on North Washington Street. I think it's key, key to enlivening that portion of North Washington Street. I mean, we heard from the other discussion, and I think you guys are all seeing it, um, with the absence of Joe Techies and um, some of the other conversions here, it's starting to become a little bit of a no man's land in the evenings. And I think that this parcel in particular um, really sees the brunt of that. Um, I am personally someone who comes from East Boston, and I generally take a tea. But when I do drive in, um, you end up right here, uh, looking at this parcel, which has just become pretty dilapidated and a bit of a sad entry point to our great city. Um, and we want to make sure that this ground floor retail is really enlivening uh, that aspect. Now, what is this ground floor retail? So it's 22,000 square feet. It's just about the size of the previous Stop and Shop, which is now the Whole Foods up um, in um, the Charles, Charles River Plaza. Plaza. So we designed it to accommodate a supermarket. We have talked to supermarket operators about the ability to locate here. They agree that the space works and that the uh, loading uh, also is sufficient, that there is the appropriate mechanicals, will size the vents, the mechanicals, and all that sort of thing for it. So we as a developer have developed a site that can accommodate a grocery store. Am I here today to tell you that I have a grocery store? No, because I am not a supermarket operator, and unfortunately there has been a, such a torture history with this that um, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, interest on the behalf of a number of larger supermarket chains to weigh into this very scary waters of the North End, West End, and Beacon Hill. However, um, I am here today and continue to be convinced that if we build a site that can accommodate a grocery, we have our best chance of locating a grocery here. I'm not going to get into details of who we talk to and how we talk to them because it just backfires on everybody. Um, but there continues to be interest. Um, we think as developers and people who get things built in the city, the best thing to do is to permit this and to get it built and to hope that we can attract the type of brochure that you want here. But recognizing that this neighborhood is continuing to be built out with residences, there is the ability to have sort of that that demographic that needs to pull in. I know that you all see the need, we see the need, but unfortunately we're not national store grocers who uh, have very different models when they look at things. Um, I'm going to take you quickly through the rest of the building because I'm sure all of the questions are going to be back to this. So let me quickly show you the rest of the building and then you guys can, can ask um, away with the other pieces. Uh, the ground floor, uh, the residential lobby, we've chosen to identify it at the corner of Canal Street. We're calling the project One Canal. It's the actual address here on Canal Street. Uh, the corner uh, matches the current terracotta building, which really is a beautiful building in the area. And this really wants, calls that to be the residential entry. Uh, we're looking at a 
a two-story glass box with um, a potential uh, roof garden and any space for the residences. And then you'll see the retail wrapping around here. We have a second and third garage, second and third floor garage that'll be appropriately masked so you're not seeing garage. On Avenir, you don't see the garage on the second and third floor because there's actually units around it. But here we have sort of a, a tighter space that we're not able to do that. But obviously we can't have underground garage because this building is built over the green line, orange line, and the central artery tunnel. Just a couple things for our structural engineer to deal with, but uh, we did it at Avenir and I have great faith in our architects and engineers. Then we have um, residences on the fourth through the twelfth floors, uh, whereas Avenir is 241 units, we're looking at 320 units here with a uh, 0.5 parking ratio with the uh, so about 140 or 159 parking spaces that are dedicated solely for the residences. So, so you yeah. mention the streets that we're looking at? Sure. And talk a little bit more about the terracotta building, just to give people more of an orientation as to what are we looking at there that a we know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so here you are, this build, if this is the government center garage and Canal Street running up to the TD Garden, this is the corner as you're crossing from Haymarket uh, subway up Canal Street. So that is, so the Grand Canal restaurant is right here. Um, as my husband, whenever he asks me where I am, he, or I ask him where he is, he tells me which bar he's near. So that helps to orient him the most. Um, so the Grand Canal building is here. We've, you know, in previous incarnations, this was considered a pocket park, but we really felt like it was important to bring it out to the street edge. Um, that pocket park right now is pretty dismal looking and uh, kind of can attract a lot of other things. I know that when Becky Matson was a development team, she spent a lot of time telling you about the Middlesex Canal, and we actually will still be doing an ode to the Middlesex Canal history in our um, in our lobby, but I won't spend the rest of my time talking about it. the building you just built? Already is where yeah. the next one. This is it. Right. This is it up a little bit further. So, um, this is the view as you are coming around North Washington Street. So, we're really hugging the edge of, of, the, uh, of North Washington Street. We are urban planners by design, and we think that bringing street, uh, buildings out to the street adds for vibrancy. And so, that is what we're doing. We're building the building right out to the street edge. This is the long view down the Greenway. I mean, really, this parcel is going to be the tip of the Greenway. What you see as you're coming down the entire length of the of the um, of the Greenway, and it I think calls out for something significant. We're really pleased with what our architect has pulled together. This is her sort of um, it's an assemblage of smaller buildings. If I can use my architect speak, we want to keep the vernacular of the Bullfinch Triangle and then over into the North Washington District, but do something pretty special and a little bit interesting down um, the long corridor from the Greenway. Then you wrap around to um, what is now Beverly Street. So this is our Beverly Street entrance, and this is Valenti Way, which kind of cuts across from the north end to the west end. Um, this typically had been uh, spoken about as being the main corridor for the retail, and I think it still probably does call to be the main entry if this is to be a, a ground floor um, grocer. So this corner is would, would be activated in addition because these parcels, this is Avenir, and the parcel next to it is currently under construction, the Simpson housing parcel, and then there's a third um, housing, uh, third parcel for Boston Development Group being planned. You come around Valenti Way, which, you know, unfortunately does have being a five-sided building doesn't really allow you to have any back door, um, and Valenti Way really does want to call out to be a, a, a through area. What we are calling out is for a secondary a residential entry so that people can pop into the Green and Orange Line here. We have a very funky uh, substation. If you've seen that parcel, there's a large electrical substation from the T. That stays. The vent also stays. Two things on this uh, this site that makes it very difficult. Um, but we do have the entry for both the residential garage, which is just one up and down for the residential garage, but we have two doors for the circulation of the larger trucks, delivery trucks. I'm going to show you this because I think it speaks a lot to what the building looks like, but I want you to be sure that you're not ever going to see this view. And so this is, um, and I think it helps clarify how this parcel works. This building here is 
been um, building on Canal Street. So this is the Grand Canal um, terracotta building. Our building, because we have this kind of funky site, is built as essentially a horseshoe around it. It's a 60 foot wide corridor, which is uh, great for residential, and it allows for internal loading behind the scenes. No one sees this. This building is 40 feet tall. Our building here matches that, and then the building comes behind it. This is going to need some additional treatment um, because the people who will see it are the people who are paying to rent these units. So this is not the yet end result. In fact, there's uh, been a lot of talk about what type of amenity space might go back there. Um, and, and so we're considering that. Um, you know, as you come up through the building, then you saw the ground floor retail. Our parking is set as a tray below up the, there in two floors. And then the residential floors are um, a mix of studio one, two, and three bedroom units that uh, wrap all around, really have fantastic long views of the Greenway and over to, um, to the water. And then actually, surprisingly, these units have fantastic long views of that bay. Once you get over the, uh, the, up to the 40 or 50 feet, you're seeing back um, along the other corridor. So we're very excited about the parcel. I mean, I think that we've hopefully, you know, proven ourselves as responsible developers. And I think one of the things that we're anxious about and we're looking to do is to press on. We need to get our funds. We've actually had uh, an equity investor who's wanted to be, uh, to build this building with us for the past year and a half. We've witnessed a lot of other people talking about building their big buildings through the neighborhood. And I think we're starting to witness, you know, a, a, a building boom. Um, but we also don't want to miss the cycle and uh, let ourselves be in a place where we can't even begin to get to the places we want to get to. So I'm going to leave it there because I know you're all going to ask lots of questions. And you know, I've got a little juice in me because I have my coffee, but I might start to fade as we're all nearing 9 o'clock. Okay, Matt, I think I cut the video.